Amen. It is good to be back in the Lord's house again this morning, be able to worship together as we worship the one who uh, was willing to go to the cross, was willing to die. But most importantly, we know uh, we have our salvation because he was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Then he rose again on the third day, victorious. And we are coming upon the Easter season. We're getting in uh, to the Easter season, and we're uh, hopefully. Daily in our lives, we're celebrating a risen Savior, but it uh, seems as we enter Easter, uh, maybe our thoughts turn to it a, a little more, uh, maybe uh, more opportunities to share with uh, others uh, that uh, may know but may not fully understand um, the impact of, of Christ's resurrection. And so it gives us an opportunity to uh, be even more uh, vigilant and sharing God's word is, uh, you know, everybody, I should say everyone, but people celebrate Easter and maybe they're uh, kind of Easter and Christmas, maybe their thoughts turn uh, a little bit more uh, towards that. This morning we're going to look at a passage of scripture from the book of Isaiah, in the 65th chapter. <clears throat> Isaiah, in the 65th chapter, I've entitled the message this morning, God's Picture. And the question that came to my mind as the Lord laid this passage of scripture on my heart is, have we ever thought about life or how life would be if everyone was a follower of Christ? How much different would the world be that we live in today? How much different would the world be if everyone was a follower of Christ? And we're going to see here that Isaiah, in his prophecy, is sharing what God shared could be the world that we could live in if everyone was a follower, if everyone was a believer of Jesus Christ, if everyone followed after the one who God sent into this world. And we know that uh, there's coming a time when uh, we will be with him uh, forever, and we can only imagine what uh, heaven will be like. Uh, we can only imagine the uh, splendor of heaven. Uh, we, in our earthly minds, we can uh, think about uh, the streets of gold and the, uh, you know, the walls of pearl and jasper and just in our mind picture it, but I don't think we can actually picture uh, what it would be like to be with him uh, forever and ever in our earthly minds. And we are looking forward uh, to that time. But we, uh, last week we, we shared, uh, you know, how Jesus is a greater glory and he came to live uh, in our lives, <coughs> excuse me, uh, in our bodies as a as a temple and are glorified, uh, you know we are uh, we carry uh, him in our lives uh, as uh, you know as an earthly uh, temple of Christ, and he is a greater glory. He is what uh, gives us glory in our lives. It's not us. And as we said today, we're going to look at a, a picture of what Isaiah uh, was was writing, uh, what it could have been had. Uh, you know, everyone accepted uh, the promised Messiah. We know that Isaiah talked about the coming uh, Messiah. He is one of the, the prophets that, that uh, shared of the coming promise. And uh, we've shared before how Isaiah is broke up into uh, two different sections. What we would think of in our scripture is Old and New Testament. Uh, and this is the site, of course, there's only one more chapter after uh, this in, in Isaiah. So this is the site of hope. This is where uh, he is giving hope. So this is an encouragement. Uh, hopefully not to not only to the people that Isaiah uh, was writing to, but it's an hope and an encouragement uh, for us today. In Isaiah chapter 65, begin reading this morning in verse 17. It says, For behold, I create, it, create new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing, and the people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor her voice of crying. No more shall an infant from there from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner, being 100 years old, shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat, the fruit, and eat their fruit. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of, of my 
in the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they shall be, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord, and the offspring with them. It shall come to pass that, the, that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hunt nor destroy. Shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. As we said, as we uh, read this passage of scripture here, as Isaiah was writing this uh, to to the people, to the original audience, uh, they they had, uh, probably were having a hard time uh, even, even grasping this. And even today, we still have a hard time uh, grasping the uh, the world. That, that Isaiah uh, was talking about, uh, the, the, a world where this could actually uh, come to pass. And as we said, we, we know that there's coming a time uh, that we will be in the presence of Christ forever, that we will be in heaven, and, and we know at that point that this uh, will, will come to pass, that at this point there, there won't be the sorrow, there won't be the, uh, the heartache that, that we experience uh, here on this earth. But Isaiah was writing this uh, as as uh, the nation Israel, uh, they had came back from, from bondage, they had rebuilt uh, their, their temple, but yet their lives were still in, in uncertain. Uh, their, their lives were still as, as uh, up in the air. They were uncertain about what uh, the, the future held. And we know that even later, uh, the, the Romans, they were, they were in captivity to the Romans in the time that the Jesus was here uh, on the earth. They were under Roman rule at that time in, in Jerusalem. And, and so Isaiah is writing about this new Jerusalem, and he is not talking about the, the future Jerusalem as we know it, that, that Jesus had prophesied and that, that is prophesied through uh, John in, in Revelations, the new Jerusalem, which is uh, where we'll spend eternity. But what Isaiah was talking about was uh, that, that, it, that, the wor that God was sending a Messiah into the world, and, and then if everyone would accept him, what Jerusalem would be like, the physical Jerusalem that they were living in uh, at that point, what, what it would be like if they would just follow this promised Messiah. And we know that, uh, of course, they didn't. We, we know when God created the, the world, that he put Adam and Eve in the garden, and what the, the world was at that time. It was not as, as the world as we live in it today, because our, our world <coughs> excuse me, today is, is marred uh, with, with sin. Our, our world today uh, has the curse of sin uh, on it because of, of Adam and Eve and their sin in the garden. Uh, now, we, now we are a, a sinful people. But what Isaiah is sharing in his passage, as we said, was, was tough uh, even for his readers, the original audience uh, at that point, uh, to even grasp or to understand uh, were, were some things that were very exaggerated. Something that they, that at that point that they themselves could not even uh, you know, fathom. And, and even today to us, it, it seems that there are things that, that are very exaggerated to, to say that this would be a world that, that we could live in. That this would be a world that, that we could have uh, around us today. And that's what uh, Isaiah was prophesying, that, that, that this could be the world. And, you know, th this was uh, the picture that, that God had uh, for his people. Uh, originally, when he created uh, Adam and Eve in the garden, it, it would have been, uh, you know, the, the picture, uh, the, the, the perfect world for them uh, to live in. They didn't have the things that, that we had. And that's what Isaiah is sharing, it, it is the God that, that we serve and the God that, that, that is the, the one true God, the, uh, how he pictured the, the world uh, to be. Of course, he knew that, that man would fall. He knew that, uh, that the sin would enter into the world, and that is the reason that, that he gave uh, you know, Christ to come in uh, to the world. God needed a way to redeem uh, his people. He needed a way to, to have that, uh, that bridge between uh, the, uh, us as, as a fallen uh, human and, and him as, as the creator uh, of the universe. And, of course, we know that that bridge that, that came uh, was, was Christ. That, that bridge that, that, that we have uh, to get to the Father is through uh, Christ Jesus. It, is a, it was a bridge that, that was built uh, for us. And it was a very costly uh, bridge for, for God to send his son into this world, of course, uh, to be that ultimate sacrifice. But as we said, Isaiah here is using some stuff that, that, that we look at that uh, seems to be very exaggerated. Seems to be something that, uh, can, that, that we cannot even uh, fathom. He said, for, I behold, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. 
Be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem uh, as a rejoicing. In other words, he was saying, you know, uh, I would have this for my chosen people. Uh, as we said, Isaiah was writing this to uh, the Israelites, to God's chosen uh, people. And that was uh, God's desire uh, for them, that he could create uh, a new Jerusalem. One, one uh, where, where they could uh, live in, in peace and, and harmony uh, together. You know, we, we know that they had, uh, you know, uh, other uh, issues come about. But even uh, Jerusalem itself, even the Jews themselves uh, were not living in peace and harmony uh, with themselves. Just as today, uh, we don't live in peace and harmony uh, with ourselves. You know, we, we don't live in peace and harmony sometimes uh, with our neighbors and our fellow man. Uh, but because of the wickedness, because of the sin that, that is in uh, the world. And Isaiah was writing uh, uh, about how God would love uh, for, for this to be the, the world that he created. You know, we, we know that, that he is an all-knowing God, and, and he knew uh, this. But what Isaiah is, is picturing, or what Isaiah is pointing out uh, to the people, is how great uh, it would be if uh, we would have uh, lived our lives. If Adam and Eve had not sinned in the garden, if uh, we got along with, with one another, and God was sending uh, Christ, <coughs> excuse me, Christ into the world uh, to, to try to remedy that and, and, and to bridge that gap. But we know that, that not all accepted, and still today, uh, not all accept Christ. And that's what uh, Isaiah was sharing, is how great th this would be. You know, he, he talked about some things that, uh, as, as we said, are even hard for us to imagine. Uh, down there in the end of verse 19, uh, he said, The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard, nor the voice of crying. You know, we, we would love to live in a world where there is uh, no, no weeping and no crying or no sadness or no sickness. That, that was the world that, uh, that, that God uh, created. That, that was the perfect world that, that God created, and that's what Isaiah was sharing. That, that was God's picture uh, for the world. That, that was the picture that God wanted uh, for the world, and he is saying that there can be uh, that in the world again today. There, there could be that. As we said, it was hard uh, for the original audience uh, to accept that, that, that there could be a time uh, of no weeping, uh, a, a time of no sorrow. Uh, you know, he, he went on uh, there in verse 20 to say, No more shall an infant uh, from there live, but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days, for the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner, being 100 years old, shall be accursed. He, he is saying that this is a desire that, that he had. This is a desire that he had uh, for, for the nation. And even Jesus, uh, as he was uh, uh, doing his, his earthly ministry, you know, uh, he, he had this for the nation uh, Jerusalem, for the city of Jerusalem. You know, he, he shared uh, what, what it would be like if they would have listened uh, to, to what he, we had to say. Uh, we, we can read in the book of uh, Matthew in the 23rd uh, chapter, in verse 37. And Jesus, in his teaching, he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather you, to gather your children, together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. That, that was a desire that God had for the nation Israel. That, that was a desire that God had for the nation Israel, that, that they would listen to him, that they would surrender to him, that they would live their lives in, in obedience uh, to him. And, of course, we know that they, that they did not do that. And it was his desire when he sent his son into this world that, that we would have that same uh, opportunity, that, that we would accept Christ uh, as our personal Savior, that, that we would live uh, a life where we wouldn't have to worry uh, about sin and, and sorrow, when we wouldn't have to worry about weeping, uh, when, when a, uh, a child uh, could live, as Isaiah said, more than a few days, and an old man uh, could reach uh, you know, an old age, its full potential. That, that's not the world that we live in because we live in a broken world. Well, that's not the world that, that we live in uh, today because we live in, in a broken world. That, that was the desire uh, of God. That, that's the desire that God has uh, for his people. But, but we know that we do not live uh, in that world. Even God sending his son, the, the perfect uh, man, into this world uh, did not cure the, the, the illness or cure the sickness that this world had. You know, as we said, it would have been great if everyone would have accepted Christ. That is, when Christ came into this world, uh, of course, we know he came as a babe. If everybody would have uh, accepted him as the Messiah, if everybody would have accepted him as the one 
that had been prophesied, the one that God was sending. And we uh, just heard in our Sunday school lesson this morning that they, uh, per, uh, you know, they were, they were praising him uh, as a king. They, the Israel uh, was looking for a king that was going to come in, a uh, one who was going to come in and overthrow, uh, as we said, the Roman rule. Because at that point, they, they were under the, the Roman rule. You know, Isaiah is sharing, as we said, things that are uh, seem so exaggerated, uh, even uh, to, to that time and, and today, uh, still today, things that seem so exaggerated uh, to us in, in, in our lives, that, that we could have, uh, you know, a world where we don't have to worry about uh, young children uh, dying, that we don't, that, you know, we could live uh, to, to be a ripe old age. You know, he even shared, he, he went on there and shared, uh, you know, how we could live uh, our lives in verse 21. That they shall build houses and inhabit them. They plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For the days of the tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. As we said at this point, Israel was still uh, not completely settled. Israel was not completely settled. As we said, we know that they had been in captivity to Babylon. Uh, God had allowed them uh, to come back, and they had rebuilt their temple, and they began uh, again to, to uh, do uh, uh, what, what they would consider uh, normal. But they also still lived in a time of turmoil because they didn't know uh, what else was coming. You know, they, they were still living in a time of turmoil, and, and they didn't know uh, what was coming. I mean, we are a blessed people here in, in, in America because we, uh, you know, we can look at this and we can say, well, we live uh, that life. You know, we, we live in houses that we have built. You know, we, we are able to plant our vineyards and, and we're able to eat, but we know it's not like that uh, around the world. Uh, we, we know that there are people who, uh, you know, are still in turmoil today. The world is still in, in turmoil uh, today. You know, we, we, are, we are a blessed people. You know, God has blessed us in that we uh, no longer are, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, concerns about that. But, but we don't uh, think that, you know, uh, we're, we're going to build a house and next day somebody's going to come in and, and kick us out of our house. Or we're going to plant uh, vineyards and somebody's going to come in and, and, and overtake them. That, that was uh, something that, that happened in, in biblical times. And as we said, there are still uh, places around the world today that that happens. That, that people do not have the, the peace and the comfort that, that we have. And, and so uh, for, for us to grasp this, you know, we, we seem to uh, at times to have a hard time grasping, you know, uh, this. But, but this was a real thing uh, to the people that Isaiah was writing to. You know, we, we are a blessed people. We, we are a people who, you know, we, we may not worry uh, about where our next meal comes from, but we know that there are people around the world that, that that's a concern to them. You know, we, we are not concerned uh, maybe about uh, what tomorrow holds because we know that, that we are able to, to uh, you know, get through the, the next day. But there are people around the world uh, who are not. And that's uh, the turmoil that was going on in, in Jerusalem at that time. That was the turmoil that, that was going on in, in Isaiah's day as he was writing uh, to, to the nation Israel. They, they were in a time uh, of turmoil. And, and Isaiah is saying, this is the world that, that God had for you. This is what it could have been like, uh, of course, had Adam and Eve not sinned in the garden. And, and I desire uh, to have that again in, in sending his son uh, in, into this world. So, so it was a time, it, it was God's picture uh, for the world. But, but as we said to, to the people of Isaiah, uh, as well as us today, it, it seems like a great exaggeration that, that we will never have that. And we know that here on this earth, we will never have that. You know, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. But we know that in, in Revelations, uh, you know, in, in John's Revelation, that it talks about that there are, uh, that they'll cry for peace and there will be a time of peace. But it's going to be very uh, short-lived because we know that, there, that, that Satan is still uh, trying to get a foothold uh, into this world. We, we know that the, this world, that, that everybody that's on the face of the earth will never accept Christ as a personal Savior. You, we, we know that it will never be the, the peace and the, and, and the contentment that we have, that, that, that we would like to have in the world. Because we live in a broken world. Because we live in a world that, that has sin in it. Because we live in a world that, that has troubles and has turmoil in it, that, that we will never experience this. But that's what Isaiah was sharing, how great it, it could be, how great the world could be that, that we could live in, how great it could be uh, if everyone uh, followed after the, the one true God. You know, if everyone 
followed after, you know, and, and did things. And, and he even there in tw verse 25 uh, talked about natural enemies that were living together. said, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like an ox, and thus shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. You know, we, we know that that is not uh, a time, but, but we do look for the time when the lion and, and the lamb will lay down uh, together. But, but they are, uh, you know, a lion is a predator, and so it's going to go after that. You know, even, even uh, the scripture refers to, to the Satan uh, as a lion. It says he goes about as a roaring lion, seeking who, whom he may devour. You know, it, it's not going to be a time uh, where the lion and the lamb will lay down together uh, here on this earth. We, we, we as believers, we're looking forward to that time when we'll be with him forever, when there will be no turmoil, when there will be no heartache, no, no sickness, when we will be able to live and, and, and not have, you know, that, that um, fear of, uh, of what uh, tomorrow holds. Because as believers, we, we can hold fast and we can hold true to that because we know who holds tomorrow. As believers, we, we can live our lives because we know uh, what tomorrow holds. We, we don't know everything we're going to face, but we do know who holds tomorrow. We know who is in control uh, in the world. We, we know who has overcome uh, death, hell, and the grave. God sent his son into this world for that reason. We, we celebrate that as Easter, and as we said, hopefully we celebrate that daily in our life, that, that Christ is, is uh, victorious. That he has conquered death, hell, and the grave. And we don't have to fear uh, these things. Yeah, yes, we may have concerns. Yes, we may have uh, these areas in our lives that we're concerned about. But, but we don't have to fear because we know who holds tomorrow. We don't have to fear because we know that, that Christ has conquered. You know, to, to us, it's, it's not a, an exaggerated world. To us as believers, it's not exaggerated that, that we could have this peace and, and this contentment uh, because we understand that peace and that contentment uh, in, in our lives. It doesn't mean we don't have sorrow. It doesn't mean uh, we don't have sickness. But, but we can have that, that peace and that contentment uh, in our lives because we, we know uh, who has created us. We know who has redeemed us. We, we know whose lives we are or whose children we are. We know who holds uh, our very lives in, in the palm of his hand. He told us in scripture, I have you in the palm of my hand, and, and there's nothing that, that can separate. In Romans, he said uh, that, that there's nothing that can separate us uh, from the love of God. As believers, as those that have accepted Christ as a personal Savior, we can have that peace and contentment. Are, are we living in a perfect world? No. Is the world all around us uh, all of a sudden going to become perfect when we become believers? Uh, we, we know that, uh, uh, that that is not true, that it doesn't automatically uh, everything uh, fall in place in our lives. Uh, automatically, uh, you know, everything goes together uh, perfectly uh, in our lives when we become believers. But it's God's desire that we surrender our lives to him. It's God's desire that we can have that peace and that contentment uh, in, in our lives because we know who holds tomorrow. We, we know uh, whom we have believed and, and persuaded that he is able to keep that which we have committed uh, against him that day. We know whom we have believed. We know who our faith is in. We know who uh, holds uh, uh, our, our future. We, we know that we have surrendered our, our lives to him and, and we can live our lives because we know that he is going to bring us through uh, each and every situation. We, we know that he is going to bring us through uh, everything that we face uh, in our lives. You know, that, that, uh, to, to, to the world, that, that seems just as exaggerated uh, as what Isaiah was writing here, that there would be no sin or, or that there would be no more tears or, or no more sorrow, that there would be a, a time whenever, uh, you know, uh, there would be no death of young children and, and old men could live uh, to, to their full uh, age, that, 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 there, that we could uh, build houses and we could plant vineyards, and, and that we could live in our houses, and nobody is going to come and take them away from us, and, and nobody's going to eat our food, and, and nobody's going to give us uh, any issues. That, that was the, the world that Isaiah was writing about, that they had a hard time uh, understanding. That, that's the world that believers still see, that they have a hard time uh, understanding. As, as we said, here in America and, and many other places around the world that are very blessed, they, they don't have that fear or that concern. But there are still places that, that do. There are still places that are still uh, concerned about that, still have the, uh, that, that fear of not knowing what tomorrow holds. You know, they don't know where they're going to get their next meal. They don't know what's going to happen uh, tomorrow. But as believers, we can have that peace. 
We, we, we know that uh, whatever God uh, gives us in our lives, we, we know that whatever God places on us uh, in, in our lives is, is going to be uh, for our benefit. It's going to be to bring honor and glory uh, to him. You know, it is going to be uh, greater because we serve the one true God. We, we know who we have put our faith and our trust in. We, we've accepted him. I'm not saying that the world around us is perfect and, and we live in a perfect world. But our world is very, very, very great to live in because we know whom we have believed. We know where our faith lies. We know where our strength lies. We know where we get our peace. We know where we get our comfort in our lives. We, we know that we can face tomorrow because we live our lives and, and we bring honor and glory to the one true God. We, we can live in this perfect world that, that Isaiah was talking about. We, we can live in this perfect world if everyone believed as believers do and, and how great this world would be. But we know that that's not going to happen. Scripture tells us that's not going to happen. But Isaiah, in writing this uh, to the nation Israel, you know, th this seems something that was far so exaggerated that, that it would never come to pass. And, and even today, we look at this and say, that world would never be there. That world will never be there. But as believers, we know that there is coming a time when that will be our world. As believers, we know that there is coming a time when that will be our life. One of these days when Christ comes back to receive us, that's the world that we're going to live in, where the lion and the lamb can lay down together, where there is no more sin, no more sickness, no sorrow, where there is no death of, uh, of a young child, when, when we can live uh, to our full potential. I don't know uh, how we're going to live uh, in, in heaven. I don't know that we're going to age. Uh, you know, uh, we, we wouldn't want to think that we would get old in, in heaven and have the aches and the pains that we have as we get older uh, here on this earth. We, we don't know what heaven's going to be like. We, we can't imagine that. But what we can know is who we're going to spend eternity with. We can have that peace and that comfort in our lives uh, of knowing who we're going to spend eternity with. And, and we can find peace and comfort in this life while we're waiting uh, for Christ's return. While we're waiting for him to come. We know that we can have that peace and that comfort uh, in our life. That there is no fear in, in, in living our lives uh, for Christ. There is no fear. Uh, John told us that perfect love casts out fear. We, we don't have to fear what tomorrow holds. We don't have to fear the things that we face in this life because we know whom we have believed. We know who we have put our faith in. We know who we put our trust in. We know who holds tomorrow so we don't have to worry about tomorrow. We just have to live our lives from day to day. We just have to surrender our lives from day to day because God has already laid out the plan for us. He just desires that we live our lives and that we surrender our lives to him daily. God's plan for the world, as we know it, didn't go the way that he planned. When he created Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, it would have been great if there never would have been sin. But we know that we can't go back now and redo that. It would have been great when God sent his son into this world and, and to be of the ultimate sacrifice if everybody would have believed if everybody would have surrendered their lives and accepted christ as god's son as god in, in the human form and had accepted him as their personal savior uh, whenever he raised him from the dead as we said even exaggerated as as what isaiah's writings uh, here is uh, to, to think how ex exaggerated uh, this may be can, can you imagine those people that were there uh, on Easter morning uh, whenever Christ uh, was, was risen uh, from the dead? You know, those that had seen him crucified and hung on that cross and, and had seen him laid uh, in a tomb to see him up and walking around and alive again. That, that was exaggerated to them. To us today, we accept that. To us today, we accept that as, as believers. To us, it doesn't seem exaggerated that the God of this universe could raise his son from the dead. And hopefully to us, it doesn't seem exaggerated that the one of these days that he is coming back, that where he is, that we will be with him forever. Because that's not an exaggeration. 
That, that's not something that is so far-fetched that we can't grasp it. As believers, we can grasp it because he, had told, he, has, he has told us that, that he will uh, come back. We, we look around and we think, uh, hopefully, it's soon. But on other days, we may think, well, I wish you would tarry so that we could have more opportunity to share with others. But it's not an exaggerated plan for God, for us to be with him forever. It, it wasn't exaggerated whenever he gave these words to Isaiah to share with the nation Israel of how great that new Jerusalem uh, could be if they would all accept him. How great the world would be if everyone uh, would accept Christ. How great the world would be if all were believers. And, and it's not exaggerated uh, for us to know that one of these days he's coming back and, and we can spend eternity with him because we know who we believe in. We, we know that, that he, just as he promised that, that Christ came into this world for the ultimate sacrifice. We know because we have surrendered our, our lives to him and, and we live our lives to bring honor and glory to him. So God's word to us does not seem exaggerated. It seemed exaggerated uh, to, to Isaiah's original audience. To some people today, this may still, still seem exaggerated. But to believers, we can grasp it because it's not exa exaggerated words. Because we know who we believe. We know what God has for us in our lives. Whenever he promised us that we would have a way to be with him forever. And as we surrender our lives to the ultimate sacrifice, that, that we can live our lives to, to bring honor and glory to him because he gave us Christ and that Christ was victorious over death, hell, and the grave. We can face tomorrow because we know who we believe in. Let's again look to the Lord this morning in a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, again we come before you and we thank you and praise you, Father God, that we know who we have believed in. We know who we have put our faith and our trust in, and we know, Father God, that we can face tomorrow, Lord, because Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave. And Lord, as we celebrate this Easter season, Lord, as we celebrate that daily in our lives, Father God, it shouldn't only be a time more than Easter that we celebrate, but daily in our lives, Lord, we can celebrate the risen Savior that we can face each and every day here on this earth, Father God, because he lives. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we can face today. Because he lives, we can face each and every situation that we go through in our lives. Because Jesus came into this world, because he suffered on that cross, because he died that cruel, agonizing death, but most importantly, because he rose victorious on the third day. Father God, we can have that relationship with you. And I just pray, Father God, that daily in our lives, we are celebrating and we are encouraged, Father God, that we can have that relationship with you. Again, we thank you, Lord, for this time. And again, we thank you, Father God, for your word. And again, we pray, Father God, that again, that each and every one of us are encouraged, Lord, that, that we are not living an exaggerated life, Father God, because you, with you, nothing is impossible. Again, we thank you, and again, we praise you. We ask all this again in Christ's most holy and precious name.